Hey everybody, in this video lecture we're going to talk about something called electric potential difference which is better known as voltage. I think I'm going to do this in two parts like I have some of my other uh, lectures. In the first part of the lecture I'm going to really cover the overall global question what is voltage but in the second part of the video I'm going to talk about some specifics of voltage such as how some DC power supplies work like batteries. We'll talk about wall outlets and how they differ a little bit uh, even though you certainly have heard of voltage associated with a wall outlet. There's also a chemical process that's pretty important for understanding voltage. We certainly won't have time to go into that in great detail on either of these videos but I would like to briefly bring it up so that uh, you have a slightly better idea of how a battery works. Let's start with a definition. A voltage is a difference in potential energy that a charge can experience between two different locations. Specifically, it's a difference in the number of joules of energy per coulomb of charge. So one volt is equal to uh, one joule per coulomb. Why is there a difference in this potential energy? That's because we will take our negatively charged electrons and if we put them near positively charged protons they're attracted to one another and if we have our electrons near other electrons they repel each other because they both have negative charges. That means that a, a single, if we focused in on a single electron it may not want to be where it's located. It may have a desire to move out of the way into a different location. Now if that different location is more desirable then there's a voltage between them. So let's take a look at this picture that I have drawn here. I've drawn some sort of material down there. This is going to be some sort of conductor. It's made out of charged particles as is all matter. And I'm showing that there are excess electrons in this. So there are actually more electrons than there are protons. And let's compare it to these different locations. So the first location on the top left you can see that there are actually more protons than electrons and then I start to slowly work my way down to the right to where I actually get uh, excess electrons. Now typically this type of figure is a little bit confusing to look at and so we're going to simplify it down as would many people and every time I have one proton and one electron side by side I'm going to remove them. This allows me to see what we would call the net charge. So now I know that the big sphere down at the bottom has a net negative charge of five units, the five electrons I'm showing. And then on the top left, I have a net positive charge of two. If I start to compare locations, because remember a voltage is a comparison between two locations, I can say that there is a voltage or an electric potential difference between the big sphere and the small sphere. The electrons in the big sphere down below would like to be able to get over to this other location because they're attracted to it because there are a lot of positive charges over there and in fact it's doubly so because they're repelled by the charge that's around them with the other negative charges. If we look at this next circle over uh, up on the top here we can see that we would still have a voltage but it's not quite as much it's not as large of a voltage because there's not as much of a desire for the electron to get over there because there's not as much of an attractive pull from those excess protons on that side. I can still have a voltage going to something that's neutral because this time it's just solely the repulsion of my bottom sphere, my bottom conductor down here that is repelling the electrons. I'm going to skip this uh, fourth one and go straight to the fifth one because I want to show you that even though I have five excess charges drawn in both locations because the the circle is smaller on the top right it actually has more incentive for an electron to not want to be there because I am asking my electrons my excess electrons to be more confined and they have to be closer to each other in that particular case. So an electron would actually still want to move down to that bigger conductor down below just because there's more room. 
That leaves me with this last one, which is kind of interesting because it's a smaller circle, but it has less charge. Uh, this alone, I, I can't really speculate on the voltage of this particular situation, but this kind of proves a point for me for why we are interested in voltage. I look at this diagram and it's difficult for me to make a judgment about where it would an electron rather be. However, I can hook up something called a voltmeter and I could just test these two different locations and I would read a voltage if there was a desire for electrons to be on one side versus the other. Another extension to this concept, let's take the bottom conductor and smush it into a tighter space. I've left the charge alone, but now I've confined them into a smaller space. This increases the desire for the electron to get out of this location. And so whereas this was ambiguous before, now I can confidently say that the electron would like to move from the bottom location up to the top. Taking another look at this position that we had before, I haven't changed anything on the top right. And in this situation, we would say that these two locations have the same electric potential. So there is no difference in their electric potential. That's by definition a zero voltage. This is going to be pretty happy to just stay as it is. No voltage, no push for electrons to move from one place to the other. Let's go and focus in on this electron in the bottom conductor that I'm showing here that's highlighted in the darker circle. And I want to take a closer look at it. So I have been personifying this electron and I've been saying that it has a desire to move from this bottom conductor up to the, to the conductor up above. What we're really saying here is that there's quite a bit of potential energy associated with this electron in the bottom conductor. Things are pushing on it. It wants to go over to this other location. It will actually lose energy if it goes from this bottom location down to the other location because once it gets there, it no longer has anything uh, that's trying to push it away. And so it actually goes to a state of lower potential energy. If we're careful about allowing these, this electron to transfer from the bottom to the top, and we do it in a controlled way, we can actually steal some of the energy of the electron and harness it and use it for some sort of task. So we have it down here, it's at a high state of potential energy, and we will allow it to move in the process grabbing that energy from it. We can put an equation on this to help us understand what's going on in a quantitative way. And that equation says that the voltage is equal to the change in potential energy measured in joules for this particular charge. Now, we measure our charges in the unit of coulombs. And a coulomb happens to be equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So it's actually quite a large amount of charge. And you'll notice that the alternate set of units for voltage is joules per coulomb. And that's pretty important to see and understand. So if I allow a coulomb of charge, this great quantity of electrons to transfer from point A to point B, I can take quite a lot of energy from them. How much energy? Well, it depends on exactly what the voltage is. Before we move too much further, let's go ahead and look at an alternate equation that we could use. Recall that a change in potential energy is also, uh, we could call that work. And I can replace the work done by these electrons um, for that delta PE and put that in the numerator of this equation. So this is just a different way to write uh, this voltage equation out. The voltage is equal to the amount of work done per coulomb of charge. If I plug in some quick numbers for us to take a closer look, we can say perhaps 12 volts, that might be a fairly standard battery, is equal to, I will solve for the change in potential energy. And I'm picking this number out of the air. I'm saying that perhaps this battery has the ability to effectively store 10,000 coulombs of charge. If I wanna know how much energy I can get out of this battery, I can, finish up my multiplication, so move my denominator over to the left-hand side, multiply those numbers together. Notice that my alternate units for volts were joules per coulomb, so there's a coulomb in the denominator. 
that would cancel with this coulomb unit over here and I just have 10,000 times 12 and I would have a leftover joule unit in the numerator so that leaves me with 120,000 joules of energy that I could get out of this particular battery while we're thinking about voltage with these types of diagrams let's go ahead and look at one more thing in this situation I'm gonna allow for my two conductors to physically touch one another I have a voltage clearly between these two locations and so far in this presentation we have not actually allowed my conductors to touch we have only allowed for the idea of having a voltage difference and potentially in a very controlled way allowed for an electron to move from one location to another when I let these two conductors touch I'm opening a gateway for the electrons to very rapidly move within the conductor and redistribute themselves so they will do that they will very quickly reorient and find the most favorable locations for them to sit in spreading themselves out as you can see I've transferred over four electrons and I have two new pairs up there electron pairs where I have a proton and an electron I'm gonna go ahead and remove those again like we've done before so that we can see a cleaner picture you can now see that my electrons have spread themselves out very evenly I have two in each location so the entire thing is now still negatively charged but what's interesting is that they are at the same electric potential so there's now zero voltage associated with you know the difference between these two locations don't let this thought even though I kinda of quickly went through this don't let this slide through the cracks this is extremely important for understanding how this stuff works anytime two conductors touch each other they will immediately go into a situation where the electrons will reconfigure themselves until those two conductors are at at the same electric potential and there's no voltage in between that can be very useful for understanding how to set up circuits and things like that last thought on this I'm making an assumption with all of these pictures here that we have no resistance in any of our conductors so these things are perfect that means electrons can move around freely with no loss of energy now while there are some materials that truly have zero resistance they are pretty fancy things uh, that you don't run across very often real-life wires at normal temperatures do always have some resistance so any metal at normal temperatures have some resistance so this is a little bit of a simplification that we're making basically we're saying that we're not allowing for any frictions to interfere with these processes let's summarize this part of the video here for a moment before we move on to the second video where I cover things like batteries and wall outlets a voltage is a difference in potential energy for a certain amount of charge and I have to always compare my potential energy between two locations so you mentioned voltage there immediately has to be an idea of between two locations I have my little picture down there to help you to help remind you of that this last concept that we were talking about in just the past minute or so says that anytime two conductors touch each other they will immediately rearrange electrons until they're evenly distributed so we could say that those two conductors are now at the same electric potential the voltage or the electric potential difference between those two things has to immediately go to zero all right we'll move on to the other video but for this one if you think you got it figured out let your computer know